Hello, this is Erica Quilly. Today we're going to paint this holiday card using watercolor. You will need to have a set of watercolors, a round brush with a nice point, some tape, a paper towel, some gel pens or a black pen, a piece of watercolor paper taped down to a surface, and some white acrylic paint with a little dish to use as a palette. Let's start by mixing up some colors for our background trees. I'm going to start by using a blue. I'm mixing this up over here and we're going to mix in with that some green. Um, I have a bluish green on my palette. I'm going to use that. Um, however, if you have whatever green you have that you like, we want these trees to kind of be bluer and uh, we're going to make them really watery to fade into the background a little bit. So we don't want these to be our, our darkest um, trees. They're kind of just our extra extra trees that are going to be off to the side. So I'm going to do that with a little bit of red or purple just to kind of tone them down a little bit and neutralize them. And then I'm going to water this paint down. I'm going to make it the consistency of tea. Um, kind of a weak tea actually. So I'm going to put lots of water in there. Um, this whole scene that we're painting um, is really, you know, it's a snowstorm and there's lots of um, atmosphere going on. So we want there to be a lot of what's called wet on wet going on. Um, and that's what's going to give us some nice soft edges and give us that feeling of one of those wintry days with there's lots of snow blowing around and um, it's really beautiful. So um, to achieve that, we're going to use really watery paint and um, kind of build our colors and our values um, sort of slowly while things are still a little bit wet to get some soft and hard edges, um, which soft and hard edges re refer to um, edges that are nice and crisp are considered hard edges, and edges that kind of blend softly from one color to another um, are called soft edges. So I have my mixture right here. This is sort of a bluish grayish green color, and I have it really watered down so it looks a little bit like um, there's some tea on my palette. And I'm going to start over on my right hand side of my paper, and I'm going to do a tree that's about two thirds of the way up. Um, up on my paper and I'm going to just start at the top and when you're painting these trees you got to remember that um, you want them to kind of look wild so if you just kind of painted just a triangle then um, it might not be super convincing that it's a, a tree out there in the in the woods so try to kind of make your brush strokes a little random um, we do have a stem that comes down from the center of the tree um, that's generally how these type of trees grow so you can go ahead and kind of you know, draw a line down the middle, but then kind of branch out from there. Um, and then we're gonna take that color over right across the bottom. I want my my water, I mean my trees to meet that snow. So if I'm gonna swoop, I have it kind of come down here and then I'm gonna have it go up, up on a little knoll over here. So I'm gonna bring this color down and around and I'm gonna add another tree on this side. And this tree is gonna be pretty similar in height, but a little bit, just a little tad shorter. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing, kind of start with a line in the middle and then just kind of bring some random branches out, um, out here. Keep my paint nice and wet and we're going to come back into this and add in some darks pretty soon. Um, I'm going to come over here and just add a little bit of drops of water. If you want to add in a little drop of blue here and there of your blue that you used to mix it with. Um, it kind of can add a little bit of interest and just a little extra um, dynamic in your painting. Um, your paint should be really wet right now. I can see that there's a shiny glare on my paper where my paint is and that's a really good sign that you're in a good place for some nice blending and mixing go. So the next thing I'm going to do is mix up some darker green. So this darker green I'm going to use um, whatever green you have on your palette. Um, I have sort of a really kind of a deep brilliant green here and I'm going to mix some dark blue with it um, and these paints that I have these are my paints that I use um, but this this card really can be painted with any kind of paints you don't have to have fancy artist quality paints you can have um, you know just even just a, a kid set of paint or, or whatever um, anything will work just jump right into it. The trick is, is to use enough water that, and kind of scrub around in your paint dish enough to get that paint nice and thick. Um, when it comes to watercolor and getting dark, deep colors, it actually has to do with a lot with the consistency of your paint. So you can see where I'm stirring this around now. This paint is much thicker than the paint I had before. Um, this is more like a cream consistency. It's almost a little bit sticky when I'm stirring it around in my 
my palette. And that's really, that's what we're kind of looking for here because we want, we want this to be a, a darker, bolder tree that's out here in the foreground. So I'm gonna come down here and, and I'm gonna do my tall tree. This is my sort of my focal point, sort of the star of the show, so to speak. It's gonna be my Christmas tree. Um, and now these trees on the side, they're both still wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and let some of those trees in that area touch. Um, but this paint that I'm, I have right now, it's pretty thick. So because that's so thick, um, I'm still gonna keep that shape of that tree. I know I'm gonna have some soft, sort of blurry edges, but that's okay because, you know, that happens out there in the winter when there's lots of snow blowing around and so forth, and it just adds to the, adds to the effect that we have here going on. Um, if you want to get a little bit more control over your paint, if you don't like what's happening, you can wait for your paint paper to dry a little bit more, um, or you can touch your brush to your, your um, paper towel. Sometimes if you have a lot of water on your paintbrush, um, when you put that paint down on the palette, um, it can blend in too much and feel like it's a little out of control. So if you're having a hard time with that, you aren't happy with what's going on in your paper, just go ahead and, and add a little bit of, um, a little bit of, um, sorry, not add, take a little bit of water out of your paintbrush just by touching, touching a little bit of that. I'm gonna do one more short tree back here that's gonna be kind of tucked behind. Um, I'm just gonna have a little bit of it showing here. I want all this to kind of be soft, soft edges here. So I'm gonna come in and just drop a little bit of water in here. I also wanna make a little bit of blue in the sky. So. I'm gonna go ahead, have a little bit of water on my brush, rinse all my paint out of my brush, I'm gonna dab my brush on my paper towel. I'm still keeping some water in there, but not a lot. And I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna just lay down a little bit of water on to my snow. And I'm gonna just kinda go along and here and there, I'm gonna touch, touch a little bit of that um, tree line. That's gonna soften that edge up and kinda give the effect of um, a little bit of reflection and just sort of shape to that snow. And then I'm also gonna come up here and I'm gonna touch a little bit of this and we're gonna kinda create a little bit of um, color in the sky. I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue. And again, I'm gonna make this really, really weak tea, like pretty much so watery that it's almost like paint water. We want really subtle colors in here. I'm gonna just bring in some of that blue here and. And we don't want very much, just a little bit. Rinsing my paintbrush out. Get all that paint out of there. And we're gonna do words over this too, so um, you don't have to worry about getting it perfect looking. We just want a little sense of color and, and so forth back there. It kinda look a little stormy. All right, so I'm gonna come back over here and babysit this area. Oh, you know what, I almost forgot. I wanted to put a little bit of blue down here in my snow too. So if you don't like what's happening, um, I, I have an area here where some of my green is washing into my sky too much. Um, and what you can do is sort of babysit your paint as it dries a little bit. And you can rinse all the paint out of your brush, kind of mop a bit of the water out, and come in here and just sort of run this brush along here. While it's still wet, you should be able to lift out um, some of that paint. If you're having a hard time, you might not have enough water on your paintbrush. So you can kind of go back in there and dip it back in, and it's sort of, you gotta find the perfect balance. But go right in there and just sort of brush that brush right along that edge, and you should be able to pick up Pick up some of that paint a little bit. And just drop in a little bit of blue in here. Kind of help it blend a little. I'm gonna come in here just for some variety. I'm gonna take some of my more brilliant green that I've got going on here. I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of, of detail in here and just use that brighter green. That's gonna give my tree a little bit of dynamic and interest because I have a lot of blues going on here. And having a little bit of green here and there is just gonna make it 
have a little bit of a variety and have this tree kind of stand out a little bit. Mixing up some more dark color in here. Add a little bit of that. I think I'm going to add a little bit more dark to um, dark to the mix over here for this tree to kind of balance that out. Just a matter of going back and forth and adding a little bit of water here and a little bit of paint there. You can even just add just simple paint drops, I mean, I'm sorry, water drops down. That's to help some of those paint colors mix and blend. Um, water does a lot of the magic in watercolor. It's really the, the key element of, um, of really having a nice flowing watercolor is just enjoying the process and, and trusting that the water is really gonna do something for you here. Again, I have some bleeding going on. I'm gonna come in here and just kind of mop that up. All right, now it's just gonna be a matter of letting it dry a little bit. Not too much. I'm gonna let it dry just enough that I can see that I have a little bit of, um, just a little bit of glare and wetness there. Okay, so my paper is not 100% dry, but it's dry enough that I can tell um, I don't have a big pool of water on here anymore. So why that matters is because it means I'm going to be able to lift off some of the paint that I put down um, and, and make um, some decorations on this Christmas tree. So um, it's really important to have some uh, paper towel really handy. We're going to use that quite a bit. And what I'm going to start by doing is just coming in here and rinsing my brush out, make sure I don't have any paint in there, and grab a little water on there. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little dot here and there where I want to put some of my Christmas ornaments. So I'm just going to kind of put that in there. I'm just going to let it sit for a second and come and put one simple over here and try to make them fairly random. All right, so while that water is sitting, I'm gonna rinse my brush out again. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to get as much water out as my brush, and I'm gonna come back in here and try to lift up with my brush that water, and I'm gonna pull out some of that color. So you can see now I have a little white spot there. Rinse my brush out again, go back in. Just using the tip of my brush, I'm just gonna go in there and just kinda of swish around a little bit, and it's gonna pick that paint up. It's kinda of like magic. Just keep rinsing your brush out and dabbing the water. It's really important because that is um, that's what's going to get you your your light white paper back. If you go back in there without rinsing the paint out, you're just going to kind of reintroduce that paint that you already had on your brush. All right, well, these are still wet. I'm gonna mix up. I wanna have these ornaments quite red, so I'm gonna grab um, some red here. I'm gonna maybe mix it with another red, so just to kind of make a color that I'm happy with. Um, and then I'm gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna touch inside of these little spaces here. And some of them are gonna still be wet, some of them aren't. Um, so kind of fill up. Sometimes you can add too much red. If that's the case, it's okay. You're gonna do the same thing that we did before where you can just rinse your brush out, get the water off, and kind of come in there and just touch it with the point of your brush a little bit, and that will pull some of that excess color off from there. And water. Sometimes the water can cause a lot of troubles with, with watercolor. It can make things kind of spread out and 
and balloon and so forth. Um, so we're not gonna not gonna worry about that too much. I'm pretty happy with that. The last thing I want to do is lift out a little bit of garland, and I'm not gonna make this a color. I'm just gonna leave it white. Um, but I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use this with my brush, and I'm just gonna make a little line of of water there, and then I'm gonna make another one, working my way down the tree. Come back, rinse my brush out, and then come back and try to lift up a little bit of that paint. Rinse it, lift it, just kind of keep repeating, and it'll come up. And I'm not going to worry about getting this back to the full white paper. Um, I'm just going to lift it enough that it just kind of gives. Um, a sense that that garland is there. Don't forget to rinse that brush out as often as you can. It really makes a big difference. little detail I want to do is to add a few little birds over here in the side. I'm just going to get some bright red and little cardinals. I'm going to start by making a really small little triangle. I'm going to have it pointing towards the tree. This little triangle is going to be the bird's head. And then I'm going to come down and make sort of a little oval, like actually kind of another little triangle for its body, and then pull a little line out for its tail. And I'm going to make them sort of pointing in different directions. Don't have to add a lot of detail to these little birds. The color of them and um, just the overall shape of that pointy uh, cap on top of its head is enough to kind of let people know that these are little cardinals down on the ground here looking for some snacks. And I think I'll put three in. Um, you can really put as many as you want in there. Um, two, I'm sure, would be quite lovely, too. Um, and for all of them, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just making little triangles for the heads, little triangles for the body, and then just pulling out a, pulling out a tail. All right. Now, I'll let it dry, and we can come back with our finishing touches. To finish the painting, I used white liquid acrylic, and splatted it lightly over the paper to give the effect of snow. I hope you've enjoyed painting with me today and have a wonderful holiday.